Okay, in this video I'm going to talk to you about various stepwise procedures for identifying the best set of um, predictors uh, when accounting for variation in an outcome variable. So, um, and this is basically in the context of a multiple regression. So the standard approach to multiple regression involves having a single uh, dependent variable and then having um, one or more predictors. If you have one predictor variable, that would be a simple regression. Um, if we have more than one, that would be called multiple regression. And so um, our dependent variable is uh, assumed to be continuous. And then our predictor variables uh, oftentimes will be assumed to be continuous, but we can also incorporate categorical variables so long as we appropriately carry out uh, dummy coding of those variables. So uh, in this particular demonstration right here, we have a set of um, uh, uh, measured variables. We've got uh, achieve, which is actually going to serve as uh, the dependent variable. And then we've got anxiety, which uh, we'll just put that right here. We've got uh, mastery goals, which will uh, just basically be right here. Subject matter interest. And uh, we'll use a dummy coded variable gender. So that will be another variable. So in a simultaneous multiple regression, we essentially are adding all of these predictors into the model at the same time. And we're trying to account for variation in uh, achievement. So when we study the R square value, uh, what we're doing is um, you know, uh, uh, capturing the proportion of variation in achievement that would be accounted for by the predictors. Now there are some circumstances where we might want to enter the predictors in a series of steps. Um, and so, um, um, and, and one approach is through the use of hierarchical uh, multiple regression where we may uh, uh, have a conceptualization about which variables we want to enter in uh, first, and then second, and then third. Um, and in that case, uh, the researcher has a particular conceptualization mind and essentially adds in predictors in a series of steps. So we have step one, maybe step two, or step three. And um, it would just basically involve uh, building a series of nested models. So step one might be something like uh, a model, like a simple regression where we may have something like gender as a predictor of achievement. And then we could have another model where we have uh, gender plus, um, you know, uh, subject matter interest as predictors. And uh, so in this case, uh, this model is more general than the, the model at step one because we now have uh, two predictors of achievement rather than one. So uh, then by the same token, we can then have step three where we add in uh, the remaining predictors. So in, in this last model, we might we would have gender, uh, subject matter interest, mastery goals, and um, our anxiety variable all serving as predictors. So in this particular case right here, uh, this would be an example of a hierarchical multiple regression. And generally, the researcher will have a rationale for entering uh, predictors in a series of steps. And so you can see that we move from really the, more, the most uh, restrictive model at step one to the most general model at step three. So what we could also do instead, if we, if we wanted to um, uh, identify sort of the best set of predictors, one, one, uh, and not we don't necessarily have a, a strategy in mind, we might utilize some type of stepping procedure uh, to identify those variables that um, best um, predict variation and achievement. So in that case, uh, the concern is really less about uh, theory testing or, or testing conceptualization and more about just identifying the, the best set of predictors of variation in our outcome variable. And so there are various strategies uh, that are available to us. One strategy is called forward regression. Uh, another strategy is uh, called uh, backward regression. And then another strategy is kind of a combination of, um, of uh, both of them, which is uh, stepwise regression. So there's backward regression and uh, stepwise. So I'll just, well, there you go. Okay, so let's run those analyses and we'll walk through them and you can kind of see the differences. So we'll start off, let's just, for starters, we'll start with the, um, just a simultaneous re regression where we enter our predictors all at the same time. So I'm gonna add in gender, subject matter interests, mastery goals, and, ang and anxiety as predictors of achievement. So this is a, a simultaneous multiple regression. You can see the method is set at enter. 
And uh, I'm just going to click on OK and run it. And you can see that as a set, the predictors accounted for about 45.8% of the variation. And we also see that, um, that uh, our R-square value is statistically significant. So we're, we would infer that the population R-square is greater than zero. When we look at the individual predictors in the model, we see that uh, gender, uh, there's a positive uh, relationship with, between gender and achievement. Given the coding of gender, where zero would be uh, male and one is female, we would say that females are scoring higher on achievement than males. Uh, subject matter interest is positively predictive and it's st statistically significant, so uh, people with higher levels of subject matter interest would also exhibit greater levels of achievement. Mastery goals is positively predictive, but it's not statistically significant. Uh, and then anxiety has a negative uh, predictive relationship and being significant. So basically, uh, uh, individuals who scored higher on anxiety scored uh, were predicted to score lower when it, uh, on achievement. So that's a simultaneous regression. Another, so the hierarchical strategy, I'll just really quickly illustrate that because that's a good pivot point for doing the stepwise procedures. So in this case, I'm going to go to linear and um, I'm going to take um, out, the, uh, out uh, some of these predictors. I'm going to enter them in a series of steps. So I'm going to enter gender at step one or as a block one uh, set of predictors. That's for the second step, I'm going to add in uh, subject matter interest and mastery goals. And then for a third step, you'll notice I'm clicking next here, where it says block three of three, I can enter in anxiety. So all three, all of our predictors are being incorporated into the model. If I click on statistics and R squared change, we're going to look to see what happens as we add in predictor variables uh, in each uh, successive step. So I click on continue and on OK. And so now you can see that we have model one that incorporates gender only uh, accounts for about roughly 16% of the variation in achievement, and that model uh, R-square is statistically significant. Uh, the second model that includes uh, subject matter interest, gender, and uh, mastery goals, um, the R-square is 0 0.406, uh, meaning that those three predictors account for about 40.6% of the variation. So we've talked about model one, model two, then model three, uh, we're up to accounting for roughly 46% of the variation by incorporating all of the predictors. You can also see, uh, so, you know, model 1, 2, and 3, all of the R-squared values are statistically significant. If we look at the R-squared change, we can see the change uh, between models by adding in predictors at each subsequent step. So, uh, the change from model uh, 1 to model 2, this value right here can easily be computed by just taking the R-squared from this step and, and, uh, and subtracting uh, the R-square from the previous model. So you can see that uh, when we added in uh, mastery goals to subject matter interest, the second model accounted for, um, we, we basically were account for 24.7% uh, additional variation over the previous model. Uh, when we add in uh, the anxiety variable in the last step, uh, we're accounting for an additional 5.3% of the variation in achievement uh, over that accounted for in the previous model. And you can see over here we've got significant F change. So this is reflecting the change in, um, change in the R-square from model to model. So uh, statistical significance indicates that we have a statistically significant increase in explained uh, variation um, over the previous model. So you can see that from model, two, uh, from model 1 to model 2, so this is the change right here, the change in the test. So we have statistical significance at the 0.05 level, conventional threshold. Um, so basically model 2 represents a statistically significant improvement in fit over the previous model. Uh, when we look at model 3, uh, the, uh, the uh, p-value is 0.042. Uh, meaning that when we added in anxiety, we had a sig significant increase in uh, the predictive power af uh, uh, after um, over the uh, model two. So that's basically how we look at that. If we go down to the um, the coefficients table, you can see that we have uh, model one, model two, model three, and their respective regression coefficient significance test. So you can see that model three in this case is, is uh, the same thing as what we had before when we entered all our predictors simultaneously. Now, if we're going to use a stepping procedure, kind of a, more of an empirically based strategy, what we'll do is we'll go to analyze regression, go to linear, and 
I'm going to reset everything and move uh, achieve over to the dependent box and move my predictors over to uh, the, the this block right here and I'll leave it as enter. So in this particular case, or actually not leave it as enter, in this case I'm going to go click on forward regression. So forward regression just basically means that uh, the algorithm is going to select the best or the strongest predictor out of the bunch uh, that's most highly related to uh, the achievement variable. That will be model one. Model two will add the next um, strongest predictor and then model three um, or any subsequent models will add in predictors with decreasing amounts of um, uh, predictive power up into a point at which no additional predictors are uh, can be added in that will contribute significantly. At that point, uh, the, the uh, algorithm terminates, and we uh, go with the uh, model that um, that uh, had the last predictor uh, entered, uh, a true accounting for significant variation. So we can look at this in action. We'll click on statistics, go to R square change, click on continue and on OK. And so now you can see that we've got model one, model two, model three and it says variables entered or removed. All of these are going to be entered because we're using the forward criterion as you can see right here. So the first model starts off by adding in subject matter interest and for that model right here, uh, subject matter interest accounted for about 25 percent of the variation in uh, the achieved variable. Then model two added in anxiety. So uh, when we add it in anxiety, the R square increases to 0.375 and the change in R square from model one to model two is 0.125. So, in this particular case, uh, when we added in anxiety, we accounted for an, roughly an additional 13% of the variation. And you can see right here that that change from model one to model two was statistically significant. Then, when we look at model three, we add in gender, which uh, increases our R square to 0.428. And that change uh, um, in explanatory power was about 5.3% and that was statistically significant. You'll notice that mastery goals does not appear anywhere and that's because mastery goals would not uh, by adding that first of all mastery goals if it were included it would add, you know it would uh, add very little change to the R square value. So you can see the R square values are decreasing uh, from model to model. Um, and by virtue of the fact that the mastery goals would not yield a significant change, uh, it was excluded from consideration. So the resulting model was uh, essentially model three right here. So when we look at the um, ANOVA tables, you can see all of the models were st uh, statistically significant. And our coefficients, you can see that we have coefficients for models one, two, and three. And with model three, we've got subject matter interest, anxiety, and gender as predictors. And uh, it, by and large, uh, we have this uh, similar results as what we had uh, earlier on. So at any rate, that is using the forward uh, selection procedure. If we go backward selection, what we do is we start off with the full complement of predictors and we whittle out those predictors that are contributing least to the overall model. So um, to show you that, we'll click on method and go to backward. And we'll leave our statistics with the R squared change on and click on OK and so now you can see that we have two models uh, that are um, that have been run. So notice over here it says variables entered and removed so the first model has all four of our predictor variables that are entered uh, simultaneously. Model 2 pulls out uh, mastery goals so that's the variable that is removed using the backward criterion and so you can see that with model 1 the R square value is 0.458 and uh, statistically significant. Model 2, the R square value is 0.428 after we take out mastery goals because that's the weakest uh, contributor to that um, our, our model 1, if you will. So we only have anxiety, subject matter, interest, and gender left. And you can see over here the R square change, it's a negative 0.03, meaning that when we remove mastery goals, we only lose about 3% of the uh, explained variance in um, the achieved variable. So it's pretty minute and that change was not statistically significant. So when we're eliminating backwards um, uh, we're essentially looking for uh, the point at which uh, there's a non-significant uh, decrease in the R-square uh, as a function of removing trivial 
uh, variables. But when we're when we're using forward regression, we are incrementing, and so uh, we continue to increment as long as there's a significant R squared change uh, by adding in predictors in a series of steps. So notice that none of the other predictors were removed because uh, it was really just mastery goal that was uh, contributing the weakest to the overall model and so that was why it was removed so we end up with model one model two right here were both statistically significant and when we look at our output you can see that uh, model one really was our uh, simultaneous regression that we started off with model two incorporated gender subject matter interest and anxiety which did actually end up being the same as our uh, forward regression in terms of the, the resulting model it doesn't always work out that way so uh, they do have kind of different uh, uh, approaches to adding and removing variables but uh, that's uh, but uh, in this case uh, they actually yielded the same conclusion then we also have uh, stepwise regression which uh, we can utilize, uh, and in this case, we would select under method uh, stepwise. And so it's a combination, really, of forward and backward regression. And the basic idea is it starts off with a forward regression. But what happens as you enter in predictors from one step to the other, uh, a predictor that was entered in as, as at a previous step can become non-significant when you start controlling for predictors that are entered at later steps. Um, and so what a stepwise procedure will do is uh, involve sort of uh, cycling through and removing uh, predictors that were previously significant and included, um, though basically removing those predictors that become non-significant at later steps. So that's the stepwise process. And so if I click on OK, you can see we've got Model 1, Model 2, Model 3, and pretty much this uh, behave the same way as uh, the forward regression. So you'll notice that it started off with subject matter interest right here uh, at step two we added in anxiety so we got subject matter interest and anxiety and then at step three uh, we added in gender so in this particular instance all of the results actually mirrored the uh, forward regression but nevertheless um, you know these procedures oftentimes will yield a different uh, conclusions. so um, it's something to be mindful of when you're uh, when you're making your choices